Good morning, everybody. We're Angelisa and Gary, the Harmony people, and it's our pleasure to be here today to make music for your service. Look much like a holy man. I hadn't known him very long. Something in his eyes told me he'd seen it all. And so I sang him my sad song. I said, I've been chasing women half my life. The other half, they're chasing me. It always seems to lead to trouble. What can the problem be? He said, You gotta be loved. I understand the mission to find the one you're dreaming of. And in these days, I know you truly can look everywhere for love. But think about it, where does love come from anyway? You know it comes from you and me What a funny game to look for love When you own the factory Be love world come to you 
morning, everybody. Welcome to those who still walk in the world of the living with an extra hour of sleep today, hopefully a little more so than usual. I hope all of your loved ones are safe and the fires we know are beginning to be contained. I hope those of you who didn't have power have power and we are all back together again. Welcome friends, old friends, welcome new friends, welcome visitors. If you are a visitor here for the first time or one of the first times, if you will just raise your hand. Great, it's lovely to have you with us. Lovely to have you with us. We'll have a time for greeting later on where we will descend upon you like a plague of locusts, so I'm preparing you. I invite you all, this is a service of remembrance in many ways. I invite you to, if you haven't already spent some time, look at the altar that um, Cat Liu and Dolores Heilbrunn and Jose Garcia all made possible for us with photographs both of people of this community who have passed away and people who have died because of police brutality in custody, ICE custody this year, an altar of remembrance. If you brought foods of loved ones, uh, please you know, bring those forward at the end of service. We're definitely going to enjoy a celebration of pan dulce. There is one right here, thanks to Jose. It's, I don't know if you've ever seen a pan dulce, but please take a look, it's the um, skull, and uh, symbolically. And so we have the offering on the altar of drink and food, and we will partake of hot chocolate and uh, celebratory foods after the service. So please join us for coffee hour, as always, but a special one today. And all service, I hope you will especially feel invited to come forward and light candles in honor of loved ones. Bring an object if you have one with you, lay it on the stairs, wherever you feel moved to. Welcome to this gathering of reflection and remembrance. It's good to be together. Please join me now in our unison chalice lighting. The words are in your order of service. We light, light this chalice, chalice for the for light, light of truth, truth, the warmth of love, and the fire of commitment. We light this symbol of our faith as we gather together. Hi everybody, my name is Max Benbow and I am from the YRUU Youth Group here at this church. 
And today we're starting a hygiene for the unhoused donation box that will be accepting hygiene products during the month of November. So we'll be working with another Unitarian Universalist church in Oakland to amass hygiene products such as women's sanitary products, contraceptives, dental hygiene products, and deodorant to donate to the unhoused next month. The donation box is a few steps away from the sanctuary door, that door over there. And there is a Walgreens on the corner of Post and Franklin, right over there. So if you want to take a few minutes during the coffee hour to purchase some products, please do so and donate to the box. Thank you. Please remain standing and join me in reading the covenant and singing our doxology. Love is the spirit of this church and service is its prayer. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in freedom and to help one another. Recognizing that there is human suffering all over this world in the course of natural and human catastrophes. We ring our gong today in honor of such places of suffering and a reminder of the obligation to know what is being done in our name as a nation and to protect always the vulnerable. Today we call into this space all victims of violence to body and spirit, economic, political, religious, and in particular, we honor those children who have lost their lives this year in federal custody those who have lost their lives in detainment camps. We'll let the ringing this morning symbolically represent those adults who have also lost their lives in the camps and the children and adults who have died trying to cross into this country 
moved by economic distress and conditions of violence at home that compel them to seek a better way, another home. So we read today the names of the seven children. Felipe Gomez Alonso. Hakalin Kal. Darylin Cordova Valle. Juan de Leon Gutierrez. Marie Juarez. Carlos Hernandez Vasquez. Wilmer Vasquez. May we keep all those named and those called into this space and their loved ones in our thoughts and in our prayers. And may we ease the tide of human suffering this coming week, howsoever we can. I invite us now into a time of spoken meditation and shared silence. In this time when the veil is said to thin between the worlds in the Celtic tradition and others, in this season of autumn when leaves turn bright colors and brittle to fall to mark the end of one cycle of life, but still nurture the life to come. We too think of those we have loved and lost. To be honest, we think of them often, but maybe we dare, invited by ritual or this time of year or the traditions of this city and of our families, maybe we dare to speak them with more courage and to reach out in heart and mind. So we call to mind those we love and have lost. We can still remember the sound of their voice, the curve and touch of their hands, the way they made us feel when we were in their company, all the ways they live inside us. And in this shared space and time, we will call out their names so that they might live still within us, in the life that ripples out always beyond loss, for as long as we are remembered. I invite, I invite you who feel moved to call out the names of people into this shared space and then we'll hold silent communion together.
which are in marine. Neil Hendrika. Bless the lost and loved. And may they continue to bless us. Catharsis, we swam our emergence through waves, tides, and time. We started out single celled critters in the ocean, evolving through yin yang. Our consciousness climbed. We are the two legged key keepers and worshippers, lovers, and abusers of life. We stand in our ignorance, brilliance indifference, awestruck by our mastery and strife, singing Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Shanti, Om, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shalom. Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Shanti, Om, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shalom. of ascension now chakras and synergy indigenous wisdom and crystalline earth power and energy conscious creation our spirit guides whisper life death and rebirth we are the two like a dreamers and meme weavers living our visions and prayers we're muscle and motion, emotion, commotion. We're labors of love, sweat, and tears. Singing Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Shanti, Om, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shalom. Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Shanti, Om, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shalom. Yes, we're dancing through labyrinths and spirals, cacophony, harmony, chaos, and stillness and light, affirming our oneness through light years of separateness. Shine like the stars in the dead of the night, singing. Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Shanti, Om, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shalom. Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Shanti, Om, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shalom. Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Shanti, Om, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shalom. Om Shanti, 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 Om
Good morning. So a couple of weeks ago, I was walking up here to the church, and I found myself thinking about my dad and Kay Jorgensen, Stonewall Allen, and others who have passed away and whom I loved deeply and cared about. It was one of those moments where I was questioning whether I had spent enough time with them, how often I didn't make it to visit, or to sit down and talk because life was so full. As I was feeling some angst that they had gone and that I didn't have more time or didn't take more time, I had one of those loud voices rise up through the density of doubt and failure. Would any amount of time been enough time? I was thinking about the approaching Day of the Dead and All Saints and All Souls Day, and it made sense to me of why most cultures or faith traditions would think of some way, some ritual or belief system around death, wanting the presence of ones we loved and who loved or inspired us to remain vividly alive in our lives to have an eternal life. When I looked up Dia de los Muertos to find out a little more about its origin, I appreciated learning that the custom of celebrating the Day of the Dead came about as the indigenous people of Mexico considered mourning the dead disrespectful. Because death is just another stage in the cycle of life. It is a holiday to help us think about a death-positive way of being. Being death-positive reminded me of one of my favorite prayers of St. Francis of Assisi in the Canticle of the Sun that he composed in the last years of his life. In the Canticle, Francis praises Brother Sun and Sister Moon and Stars Brother Wind, Mother Earth, and Brother Fire. He praises their qualities and their gifts and give them, gives them thanks. And then shortly before his death, he added the final verse. Praise be to you, my Lord, through our sister bodily death, from whom, whom no living being can escape. Whenever I read or sing this part of the canticle, I feel a sense of peace in the honest realization and acceptance that death is a part of life. It does not mean that we do not feel tremendous loss when someone we love dies, but it invites us to find consolation by giving death a rightful place as a part of life. Now I have to be honest, there are some days that I think that passing from this ever crazy world would not be so bad. Words like, eternal rest, grant unto her, O Lord, have a certain appeal. But the darn thing is that there is such a permanency to sister bodily death 
and whether for me or for the ones I grieve for, this is the hardest part to accept. They will never be back in the form that I have known them. My time has not come, and so I am here on this side with the rest of you. And together we seek to make sense of death and find ways to make peace with the depth of loss, the absence of the ones we loved and have cared for. After my dad died, my mom had a note by a candle burning that had a picture of him on it. It said, by your absence, you are present. I know these words. Most days I light a candle by a picture of Kay, who am I miss most moment of every day. I light a candle by my dad with me dancing with him on the day that I made my final commitment in the Franciscan community. I light a candle by Rasa Lea Landman, my spiritual teacher, one by Eduardo who called me mom after his own mom died when he was 10 when I was living in Nicaragua. Eduardo grew to six feet tall, but he was never too big to sit in my lap like he did when he was 10. He was murdered at the age of 27 in the streets of Nicaragua. I light candles by picture of Stone and Edward Tyler and the many in our circle of fools who have died with seemingly too few years on this earth. Yes, I light a lot of candles because I count on the constant presence of all who have been a part of my life for some, though I miss them deeply and wish they had lived till a ripe old age, I acknowledge that a part of me is grateful that they are no longer here suffering. For others who lived long lives and quietly gave way to that place of eternal light and rest, I give thanks that they peacefully moved on to the other side of life. I find a certain solemnity and peace this time of year when the earth is turning and leaves are falling to the ground and we are offered space in a variety of rituals and traditions to remember those who have died and who will always be present in their absence. Whether we believe there is a heaven or whether we believe death of body is the end, I will always be grateful for the experience of being the, in the presence of one's perpetual light for the image that they are experiencing eternal rest. For praise be to you, Sister Bodily Death, for I know no matter how much I desire one to live forever, I nor any of us will escape you. And now, since you can't take it with you, our morning offering <laughs> for the works and ministries of this community, which will carry on beyond us all, will be given and gratefully received. There's a place by the ocean Caught between the cliffs and the tide A narrow sandy slice of the garden With the rocks on either side Come and meet me by the water I'll see you at the edge of the sea Neptune's son and Aphrodite
you won't need your suit of armor. You may leave it on the sand. Feel the sun upon your body and the breeze upon your skin. Come and meet me by the waters. We'll gather at the edge of the sea. See Neptune's sons and Aphrodite's daughters. For one day we shall be free. One day we shall be. is from an interview in September 2017 of Krista Tippett with ta Coates. Krista Tippett asked Mr. Coates the question she asks all of her guests. If I ask you about the spiritual background of your childhood, where do you start? Where does your mind go? And Mr. Coates answers, well, the first thing I think about is an absence of it, because the African-American community, obviously the black, black church is so important. It was important for my cousins, and it was important for my grandmother, and it was so absent in my house. But as I grew up, as I think about it, I grew up with a heavy sense of what I would not call ancestor worship, but I would call ancestor reverence. So there was a strong sense that the people before you had sacrificed, and they were the reasons why you would be there. I can remember being a child and going to various political events in the African-American community, and there was this whole tradition of saying libations, where you poured water into a plant, and the plant was representing the earth and the folks who had gone back to the earth. And you would say names, and those names could be anybody, from Malcolm X to Toussaint Louverture to your Aunt Grace to whoever it was you felt had somehow sacrificed for you to be there. And it wasn't until, see, this is why you have this job, because it wasn't until you asked the question, and then he laughs. Love makes a bridge from heart to heart and hand to hand. Love finds a way when laws are blind and freedom banned. Love breaks the walls of language, gender, class, and age. Love gives us wings to slip the bars of every cage. 
Love lifts the hope that force and fear have beaten down. Love breaks the chains and gives us strength to stand our ground. Love rings the bells of wanted birth and wedding day. Love guides the hands that promise more than words can say. Love makes a bridge that winds may shake yet not destroy. Love carries faith through life and death to endless joy. Maybe there is no greater experience of cognitive dissonance than when a person, especially someone who is central to our lives, dies. But really, any person, I mean, one minute there is this thriving human being with personality and thoughts and needs, someone who can crack jokes and roll their eyes and get fired up about something or other, and the next minute they're gone? It makes sense that we struggle to make sense of that goneness and struggle to make sense also of that powerful feeling we have that something palpable and significant remains. It's that something that remains that most of the time we we don't just want to remember We want to stay connected to it. It is this beautiful human urge. And through time and across cultures, there are so many ways we human beings have tried to keep that connection, that palpable sense of remaining presence that endures beyond the absence. You can see it in the plethora of old photos in most of our homes or in house altars, in the sweater that never gets thrown away and still hangs by the door, in things we keep around like the lucky horseshoes my grandfather gave me from his winning horses. There were plenty of losing races, but the winning ones, the winning ones he would take the shoes from and give them to his grandchildren. Keep them pointing up, he'd say, if they're upside down, if you hang them, all the luck runs out. (laughs) Well, the luck is long ago, I'm sure, gone, but the presence of these horseshoes in drawers and on surfaces in my house, it remains, connecting me to this person. Some of us naturally find ourselves telling stories of loved ones on a birthday or a death anniversary or a moment. Annual prayer masses are said. Books are dedicated and trees are planted. So many ways we remember and commemorate. Megan Lemer, you who lost your husband this last month, you reminded me this week of this familiar saying that I'd heard and I tried to research it, and it ties back maybe to Aztec and Mayan teachings, this idea that people die not once but three times. Once when our heart stops beating, once when we're buried in the grave, and once, finally, when no one says our name again. I know how much we all can feel and mourn each of those deaths, but particularly the sadness of the third. It comes sometimes, I think, to us when we sort through the loved one's things, especially photos, I think. One man told me, I don't know what to do with them all. After me, no one else will know or care 
who these people are. How awful it is to sense that life ends and then ends again in forgetfulness or forgottenness. And so we fight to keep one another alive, I think. For author and thinker ta Coates, the keeping alive of family and friends, but also of leaders and heroes who have passed, the ancestor reverence, as he describes it, of his childhood is important, it seems, because of where and to what it grounds him, as is the case, I think, for most of us. The libation pouring he experienced in the African-American community of his child and acts of risk resistance and witness, those gatherings fed, fed by deep wells, acknowledged that they were fed by deep wells of those who had led the way, honoring those who have sacrificed for what we have now, knowing not just the strength it gave us, but the commandment it has to carry the same forward. I, for one, love the phrase, cloud of witnesses. It's mentioned in the Bible, and I actually have a hard time distinguishing between its metaphorical meaning and its literal sense. I mean, I've only been here in this community for two years and a little bit, and already it is hard for me to not think of those who are not here, but who were when I arrived. I can almost swear sometimes I can hear Maria Solis belting out in her operatic tones whatever anthem or hymn we're singing. Not blending, because she did not know how. (laughs) Her voice was so gorgeous and unique. It wasn't meant to, I think. Vera Lee, I feel like I still see her by the back pew welcoming the choir members as they file forward to take their seats. I feel like I still see George Mayer staring out at me with his sweet and gentle smile that says, it will be all right, Reverend. You're doing great. I cannot imagine what It must feel like, for those of you who have been here 10 years or 50, who you must see and feel here on a regular basis. Before he left last year for his retirement destination of New Orleans, Fulton stood by the altar that we have in the gallery. He and Thomas looked over the photos of all the folks who have been lost to this community in the last few years. They stood there telling stories about each one. And it was with a sense of loss, but but it's also with a sense, I think, of this life that reverberates between the walls and hangs in the air still, isn't it? I don't know if I ever told you this story, but years ago when I was serving in Washington, D.C., I was doing a wedding for a Buddhist monk, and he came to the sanctuary space one day before his betrothed came, he wanted to see it, and he walked the full aisle of the sanctuary quietly. He walked it, taking everything in, he turned and he walked slowly, taking everything in again, and then he came to me and he said, there are very good spirits in this place. He wasn't talking about memories, right? He didn't know anybody. This was his first time in the sanctuary. He wasn't talking about that. He was talking about some living presence, some lingering essence of people that he sensed in that space. People he hadn't known, but somehow had left bits of themselves behind. And frankly, since I spent a lot of time in that building alone, I was really glad he said that what lingered were very good spirits. (laughs) I wonder how many of us have had the same feeling of a literal presence of people we've lost. Many traditions, of course, religious and cultural, make a place for that. 
for the life that they believe endures, not only in everyday rituals, but in special holy days. In Bali, when I was there years ago, every day in front of the house that I stayed in, an offering was laid at the steps to the spirits of that place. In India, homes will often have altars, sometimes with photos of the guru and the long lineage of teachers who have gone before. And there are stories in abundance of those teachers coming back to walk the earth as needed. And of course, we all right now are right in the middle of a season that's all about connection and tending to that connection. All Souls and All Saints Day involved that sense of reaching out across the divide between the living and the dead, but as many of us know, the origins of that tie back in Europe to the ancient pagans with the observance of Samhain. And in this part of the world, weave into pre-Christian Mayan, Aztec, and indigenous observance of Day of the Dead. For Celts, the observances and rituals around Samhain were built around the sense that this time of year, the veil was thinning. In the Middle Ages, there were traditions like the Dumb Supper, when a table would be set in your home and the ancestors were invited in to eat first and then the living would eat. And after dinner, the communion of both together and there would be the sharing of updates and news and there would be games and laughter, and the windows and the doors would be left open all night for the dead to come and go, to join in as they arrived. Day of the Dead observances also often involve shared meals, of course, often at the grave, Sherry Moraga, the artist and activist with Mexican and indigenous heritage from her mother's side, she talks in her biography of her mother about visiting the grave. These weren't somber occasions, as Carmen points out. They also didn't have to just happen once a year. In her book, Native Country of the Heart, Moraga writes, it was Mother's Day at the Resurrection Cemetery in Las Lomas de San Gabriel, and Las Familias had brought coolers and lounge chairs and umbrellas in anticipation of the high noon sun. Folks hung out, eating, praying, weeding the grass around the graves, washing them down with rags and buckets of water. We too, with my father and mom's remaining brother and sister, prayed, and sang and told stories about my mom, and it felt good for all of us. Moraga grew up in a house with an altar to the loved and lost, tended to every day by her mother. And later, when her mother dies, she feels her mother's presence in the house so real that she cannot clear it out and put it up for sale until that feeling fades. Reporter Maria Inojosa of NPR interviewed Moraga years ago about the book as it was about to come up. She asked the author, these days, Sherry, when you communicate with your mom from the other side, what is she telling you? I remember being surprised when I heard the question, but Moraga, who was raised in a world where the veil was thin and connection was more to a than to just ideas or memories, she didn't hesitate to answer. I just had a dream, she said. Just the other day, I was waking up. She tells Inojosa about how the book was about to come out and how it centered on her mother and how she wanted to be able to tell the story of her mother and women like her, women who were strong and wise and beautiful, but also illiterate and couldn't write their own stories. But she was worried the book was loving 
but honest, and honest about some hard things. <clears throat> she didn't want it to be disrespectful. Me pongo nerviosa, she said, until this moment with the dream. She said, and I felt my mother at the side of my bed, and I felt her hand on top of mine. It was the strong, arthritic hand Moraga, the daughter, knew so well. And Moraga says, and I felt utter, utter approval from her, utter support, like, no te preocupes, mija. Todo bien. Don't worry. Everything is good. That was a beautiful dream, Moraga said. I felt lucky to have it. We have so many reasons to want to communicate with and commune with, picnic with, and update with the news of our lives, all those we have loved and lost. Who wouldn't want to feel the hand on our hand again? Or have the keen sense of them in the room, or know they inhabit some place they loved where we can go and visit them, whether it's a graveside or a garden or a church sanctuary? Because nothing is more strange and more unbelievable, at least to me, maybe to some of you, than death. Nothing harder to make sense of than the sense that with people we loved who were so full of life and so part of us are gone. And that they are not gone. Not until we forget them, maybe, or forget how to connect across to the place where they reside. In this pluralistic community, I expect there are very different ideas about the limits of life and the possibilities of death. And I know we tenderly make room for it all among us because we must, because, well, no one really knows for sure what happens across the veil. And more important, maybe, we each need permission to find the ways that are right for us to make sense of loss and also hold on to those that we love and keep them as close as we can. Because the truth is, not everything goes with them when they die. That we know in our bones. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the dangers that so easily entangle and run with perseverance the race that is marked for us. So may it be. Mikwa just reminded me to point out that there is not only a second ending, it's the same as the first, there's three verses. Third time, you go to the third ending and don't worry about all the other stuff there, just enjoy the whole third ending, it's seven bars. It's very natural. There's a river flowing in my soul.
If you are sick or immunocompromised, just cross your arms across your chest and we'll touch your shoulder or something to keep you in the circle of connection. I'm going to double up. <laughs> and now in our comings and our goings, may the light of love shine upon us. Out from within us, be gracious unto us and grant us peace. For this is the day we are given. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. transformation and you're working just a little hard send your ego on vacation cause it's earned a little R and R ah, ooh, you know what I mean ooh, 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 you know what I mean let your body do the thinking Let your heart lay down the beat Let your feet know more than you do While you're dancing down the street While you're dancing down the street Go on and be a soul gypsy Wander the world and see what you can see When you make the journey from the head to the heart Every little moment is a brand new start I am spirit, you are spirit Dance the spirit, dance, dance like children I am spirit, you are spirit Dance the spirit, dance, dance like children Dance like children. You're in the yoga of connection. Communication is the real art. You can see your own reflection in the mirror of another's heart. You know what I mean? Yes, you do. You know what I mean. Feel the motion in the up and down. Feel the stillness of the in and down. Hear the rhythm of the cosmos. Feel the spirit in the ground. Gypsy, wander the world and be what 
you can be when you make the journey from the head into the heart every little moment is a brand new start i am spirit you are spirit dance the spirit dance dance like children i am spirit you are spirit dance the spirit dance dance like children Dance like children. Sing with us. I am spirit. You are spirit. Dance the spirit. Dance, dance like children. I am spirit. You are spirit. Dance the spirit. Dance, dance like children. Dance like children.